We've talked about AC interference. We've talked about AC modeling. Um, next, we're going to talk about AC mitigation. So the goal for AC mitigation is to reduce your fault condition stress values to protect against stress coating damage and also arcing potentials. Okay, again, arcing is less frequent because you have to be really close to the pipeline for arcs to occur. It's to reduce the current density below some value that you deem as my threshold value. Again, typically for us in the U.S., we're going to use 20 amps per meter squared for a one centimeter squared nominal holiday size. And to maintain that AC step and touch potential below 15 volts so that people working in and around pipeline areas are not subject to shock damage due to a fault condition or just a steady state condition. And we use AC modeling to provide pred uh, predictions um, and, and, and look at what the mitigated and unmitigated conditions are. So we build a model, or alternatively, we don't build a model, we're just going to go and ad hoc it, but we're going to come up with some scheme to mitigate. So what are the schemes we use to mitigate? I'll go back to this pipeline application that we looked at earlier. Uh, when we were talking about modeling, the modeling results came out and it said, oh, we have a couple of areas where the red line falls above the 20 amps per square meter, the lower yellow level on there. So there are a couple spots there that we're concerned about. What do we do? In this case, we're going to put in what's called a gradient control line. We're going to put next to the pipe in those areas a grounding system. This is a grounding system that's going to attach to the pipe. It's going to allow that AC that's being picked up by the pipe to have a place to go because the coating system is too good. The coating system has only a few small holidays. All the current that's being picked up tries to rush out of those few small holidays, and that's where you end up with this AC-induced corrosion. By putting in a grounding system at strategic locations, we can reduce the AC voltage being picked up because we're discharging it. We're giving it a place to go. Okay? The design of that AC mitigation system, there's a lot of ways to do it, but it's basically a grounding system. In this, in this case, we're going to put this blue line represents a grounding mitigation line. AC mitigation, our strategies are typically to install what's called a gradient control mat at, a, at the pipeline location where people can touch the pipeline, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, we want to maintain safe pipe to pipeline distances so we don't have this arcing problem um, and during fault conditions. If we are too close, we want to put some sort of a shield in there so that as it um, turns dumped into the earth, it's picked up by the shield and deflects away from the pipeline to protect the pipeline. And then we want to provide some sort of grounding of the pipe to earth to dissipate this current that's being picked up during steady state condition. A gradient control mat is a real simple device. A gradient control mat is connected to the uh, pipeline appurtenance where someone can touch it. And it extends out around that uh, appurtenance enough so that somebody standing on it is not in have that step potential, okay? And what happens is now because it's connected to it, that whole gradient control mat is the same potential as the pipe. So as soon as I step onto that gradient control mat, I don't have a voltage difference between me and everything else. I'm at that voltage. So even if I touch the pipe, the ground below me is also at the same voltage as the pipe. So there's no current going to flow through my hand, through my body, to the ground because I'm standing on something that has the same potential as what I'm touching. Okay. Now you have to install these. It's a fairly significant effort to install this. But these gradient control mats protect people who are close to that appurtenant because once they're above that gradient control mat, they're now at the same level as the, the above ground structure. So touching it or standing near it is not going to cause them a problem because they're now at the same level. Okay. And current doesn't flow unless there's a voltage difference, v, delta V equals IR. Okay. You could actually be in an environment where there's real high voltage all around you, as long as you're at the same equipotential, they call it, the same potential, there's not going to be any current flow. And current is what kills you. Here's a, a case study where you've got this pipeline that runs parallel for eight kilometers to a transmission tower, and you can see that there's uh, these transmission towers Next to it, this is actually that shield wire we were talking about because it's too close. In this case, they're only 4.6 to 30.5 meters away from the tower footings. So by putting in this shield line, in this case they're using a zinc ribbon, which is basically just a, a bare zinc uh, ribbon, metal, 
that shield line will protect it from the fall. So if you're in a fall condition, all of a sudden a bunch of current dumps into the earth, that zinc ribbon is going to pick up that current and dissipate it before it can cause damage to the pipeline. Here's a graph showing the effect of zinc ribbon along the length, or showing the effects without any mitigation. You can see the voltage spike goes up above 12,000 volts of coating stress voltage. But once you add various forms of mitigation, you can see you're dropping below the stress voltage limits. And depending on what type of coating is, there's a certain voltage level that that coating can withstand. So we have a variety of ways we can ground a pipeline. Um, this is my pipeline. You can see here there's a, a spiral uh, mat where the pipeline has a, a valve stem coming up. You can put anodes in the earth that are connected to the pipeline. These anodes become basically ground rods for the pipeline. That's one way of mitigating. You can put horizontal ground conductors connected at various lengths to the pipeline. This is that um, gradient control line mitigation. This is what we do a lot of. You can actually put ground beds or deep, deep anodes in to the earth that can be grounding. Um, it's a little more expensive to do, but if you don't have, if you have real high resistance areas where you can't discharge current into the ground effectively near the surface, sometimes we did a project in um, the desert um, out west of the United States where they were picking up AC voltage. It was a new pipeline. It was parallel to a transmission line for some period. And it kept picking up voltage and had nowhere to go. And the earth around it was really dry because it was a desert environment. So there was nowhere for this current to discharge. And even if you put a grounding rods next to the pipeline, they wouldn't ground very well because it was a really dry desert environment. So we actually drilled holes down a thousand foot into the earth. And down deep in, in the earth, we installed grounding cells. And we ran those up to the surface, connected the pipe, and that's how we dissipated that AC that was being picked up. So there's a variety of ways to ground a pipeline, but all of AC mitigation is basically how do we ground the pipeline effectively. The most common materials we use for grounding pipelines, zinc ribbon is a common material. Um, zinc ribbon can be laid parallel to the pipeline. It acts as a, um, a grounding point. A bare copper is a fantastic um, grounding system. Again, uh, copper grounding systems are used predominantly in industry. And then there's engineered copper grounding systems. The MACCOR mitigator, it's a product we make, which is uh, an excellent grounding system. We'll have a separate discussion on the MACCOR mitigator and its value and benefits. And then there's these various conducrete systems that are using some sort of conductive concrete to enhance the earth's surface area. When it comes to AC mitigation and grounding concerns, some of the issues we have are ease of installation, performance of the grounding system itself, What's the life of the installed grounding system? How long is it going to last? Um, and cost. Okay. Optimum AC mitigation. Modeling is only as good as the model, so it's really important that the AC mitigation modeling that we do is accurate. Gradient control lines parallel to the pipeline are um, probably the most common uh, grounding system that's being used right now, uh, although there are, are quite a few locations where they're using deep anode systems as well. Uh, and for fault conditions, short lines at the tower footings tend to be an effective mitigation um, strategy. And that's it for AC mitigation.